Welcome to the Full Tactical Range by Range Systems. I'm Bo Dobozinski, lead instructor for defensive mindset training. I've been training handguns professionally now for almost a decade, and I've been doing martial arts for a lot longer than that. It's going on about 30 years. And in the last um, 10 years, uh, my big focus martial art-wise has been on edged weapons. Now, I typically carry four knives. I'll have two in the front and two in the back. So again, from any side, whatever I'm doing, I can reach to and grab a hold of an edged weapon. For us as uh, defenders and people are going to the ground so often and people are learning things like jiu-jitsu so often, knowing how to get to those tools to force multiply is going to be really valuable. But the one that I find that's probably the most important for defenders to carry and learn how to do effectively is what I call the offhand knife. The offhand knife is the one that's opposite the side of the primary hand. So I'm a right-handed shooter. This would mean that the left side front is my offhand knife. There's lots of good ones. A lot of people out there are carrying at least one of these folders as part of their everyday carry, and they typically carry it primary side. So you have the knife here, and you've got the firearm on the same side, or you're carrying the front, the, the firearm is here, the knife is right there. Well, those that's one spot to guard. What I want is to have a big spectrum of areas for my bad guy to have to try and guard because he's not going to be able to do it. It gives me the opportunity to start to deploy tools. Then by putting this now over on the other side, if I start to reach for this, he goes for that. That's okay. Knife now comes out. We start to engage. With um, the edge weapons at, that are folders, they're good quality knives. Like this is an Emerson Commander. It's a fabulous knife, really solid hard work, hard use knife. I've beat the heck out of it. And it's still just absolutely sharp as a razor because the steel is super strong. But drawback on folders is that there's two pieces you have to do to pull it out. So one, I have to actually get purchase on the knife. Two, it has to come out. And as it comes out, it has to make sure that this locks in place so that I can actually get a solid grip on the hand grip to be able to start to utilize the knife effectively. In order to cut down on that time for deployment to be able to use is to go fixed blade. Now the trouble with fixed blade is two factors. One, they're big and two, they're hard to conceal. Well, for your consideration for review today, I might suggest the TDI knife from K-Bar. K-Bar is a knife maker. They've been around a very long time. Uh, I've made military knives a really long time. This one comes from their TDI Institute, the Tactical Defense Institute. It's their knife training school. And uh, this was designed by a law enforcement trainer there. And you'll notice first that the, the, the knife itself is curved. So if you see um, the Emerson here, that TDI knife is actually curving. And the curvature line is very akin to the grip line of running a handgun. And you'll see how that's valuable here in a minute. All the positive ends of this particular knife is, one, it's five and five eighths inches long, so it's not super, super big, right? This guy opened all the way up, is bordering on like six inches, eight inches, which again, is hard to conceal a, a fixed blade knife of that size. Two, the metal runs the entire length of the knife, so there's, there's no just plastic down here. There's a metal all the way down to the base of the hand grip, which means it's gonna be very solid, prone to, uh, not prone to breaking. It's got a very big finger guard here with lots of knurling so you can get that finger out nice and deep. So that way this knife, if I stab something, is not going to slide past my hand and cut me, which is a really valuable thing to check on a knife you're carrying. You're gonna to wanna to do that with heavy leather gloves on. So if it does slide, it doesn't carve your fingers up. Because of the curvature now, the striking pattern becomes really straightforward. Um, a lot of a knife martial arts goes through cutting lines and cutting patterns. And cut lines are cool and stuff and you wanna learn how to do the cut lines so you start to learn how to carve people. But one of the things that you wanna do with any knife that you're carrying tactically Particularly wise or technically wise is you want to go and get a few layers of clothes that you don't mind if they get destroyed. So get yourself a coat and get um, you know a t-shirt and then get a um, you know some sort of overshirt or cover shirt that would be normally over the t-shirt and put those things over the top of a like a roast. Get yourself a roast and slash it and see what happens. See how many layers of clothes you manage to get through when you go to slash at it with the knife. And then go and turn it over the other way and stab it and see how far you get through. Well, you're gonna find that you're gonna get through a whole lot more on the stab than you are on the slash. And so this is designed for that exact purpose. I'm punching in, I'm punching into areas, trying to open them up. And so targeting errors would be just like as if I was engaging in like a knuckle punch. 
It's the same way I'm gripping a hold of the knife blade and I'm targeting the soft areas of the throat, the under of the arms, the short ribs, and if I could reach to punch in to do it, the areas of the groin where the femorals would be. The other element too with the grip is that just like if for some reason I start to shoot, the gun goes dry, I don't have any reloads, I've still got to fight, well now this becomes a, uh, you know, a one or two pound piece of steel that I can start to punch and uh, impact strike my threat with. The knife now works in concert with that, just like jabbing and crossing. It becomes very, very simple and straightforward. The knife sheath is nice and small and compact, just like the blade itself. It's got a metal clip that solidly stays around any of your uh, belts or belt loops. And the knife stays inside of the Kydex sheath quite firmly. So I've done exercises and I've, you know, done some light rolling on the ground and stuff with groundwork to see if this knife would come loose and it stayed in place the entire time. And so that's something really valuable that we want so that the knife isn't, we're not concerned that it's going to come out of the sheath. Well, those are all the positive ends to this particular tool. Now let's go into the negatives. The first is the hand grip is a bit short. So if you've got really big hands, either your pinky finger is going to hang off. If you're carrying it reverse, your index finger is going to hang off. Could be uncomfortable. You're not looking to grab this like a big fist because it'll twist as you start to go and punch at something which can be really painful in uh, the knuckle area where the heel of the the, uh, the 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 blade is actually carving into you like an abrasion not fun I think that the hand grip could have a lot more stippling I feel like it could be having a, a much more uh, um, aggressive uh, purchase on your hand and that lower level of purchase on the hand could be that the knife could slip out a little bit more easier once we start melding in bodily fluids into uh, knife work. Three, the blade length is a little on the short side. So this is two and a half inches in length. And I know from one of the other knife groups that I train with that at a minimum we're looking at, we want three and a half inches on a blade to be able to reach the internal organs, especially into the chest and into the neck because they're actually sitting in deeper. And if you're dealing with somebody that's bigger that may have more body fat, that two and a half inches, all it might do is actually open up the fat lines and not actually get into the tendons or the nerves or the stuff that we need to get down into to get to either pain compliance or to start to open up blood vessels to start the hydraulic leak to get my threat to stop quickly. So those are the negatives on the knife itself. On the holster side, it's pretty comfortable, but the clip itself is a little on the cheap side. It's kind of thin. If you got a thicker belt, it's going to start to bend it out, and you're going to go in and have to use a needle nose pliers to kind of bend the clip around to get it to sit correctly. Now, I've worn this knife for uh, you know protection duty operations where I've had it on my belt for you know 12, 14 hours at a time. And one of the things that I found is that this little flare part right at the end of the clip will start to really dig into your hip, into your thigh as you're um, you know, going through your day. And that can start to be uncomfortable, especially the, the closer you bring the knife to the front of the body, it tends to be a bit more uncomfortable. So those are your negatives on it. Carrying a knife comes with a lot of responsibility. The more that I learn how to do firearms and the more I get to train people, the less concerned I am of bad guy with firearm. Most people with firearms are not very good, but you can teach a monkey how to swing a knife and be terribly, terribly dangerous. So lots of responsibility and a lot of respect needs to happen with the edge weapons. Uh, with any edge weapon work, you want really good professional training. Don't just go out and start winging knives around. Go look for a good professional and start to work with them. Them. If you'd like to consider getting one of these knives, I have a partner link in the description below um, to uh, purchase one. They are absolutely cost effective at running about $35 to $40 for this setup, which is really good as compared to some of the other uh, defensive knives, which are running into the $60, $70, $80, a hundred, multiple hundred dollar range. So for you know $35, that's a good knife for your personal carry. No matter what though, take your time, go slow, be safe, get quality instruction. And for defensive mindset training, I'm Bo Dobozinski. Thanks for watching.